Hi, welcome to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today we wanted to tell you about how we became shepherds. It was a bit of an accident, um, but a happy accident, I think. Um, so when we moved up here in 2005, we were looking for housing, and we eventually found uh, our current place um, in and moved in in the winter of 2006, right? Yeah. Um, and but we knew from the start. Um, we even uh, had negotiated with um, the the owners that we bought it from. Um, we knew from the start that we needed to clear cut some of the land out front because the driveway was a, like a ski, treacherous a ski luge, <laughs> one of those one of those long jump luges you see on the Olympics. It still is. It still is. Um, but a little sunlight um, we knew would help that. So we removed some trees. Um, we actually ended up with a really nice view of Killington Mountain, and. Um, the question at that point was, how do we keep the forest from regrowing? Because it's really aggressive here in Vermont. The native terrain and plants are all, you know, thorny shrubbery and white pine trees that grow really quickly. Um, and so we were sort of debating our options. We were looking at tractors and we were looking at different things. Um, but the hillside is quite sloped. And so a tractor could be, well, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Nobody really wants to tractor on a slope of, you know, plus 15, 20 degrees. Um, so uh, I had been knitting for a couple of years at that point and was really starting to appreciate, you know, all the, the farm grown wools. Um, and, and Rick, you were doing some web work for a, a local farmer. Yeah, a local farmer who had a, a, a sheep business. She was raising Navajo churro sheep. And that's another story where how we got our Navajo churro sheep. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, um, so Rick was working with her and finished up the website and, and, you know, like a lot of farmers, she didn't have a ton of cash on hand. So I think sort of jokingly one day she goes, Oh, what, would you take some pay you in sheep? <laughs> take that as payment. And Rick made the mistake of coming home and telling me this. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, Ooh, actually, yeah, well, I wasn't against it as at, mm -hmm. at first either. I mm -hmm. didn't realize at the time what was involved with getting the sheep. And it is mm -hmm. a, an expense to, to get started if you don't have a, a farm already set up. Our house was a lovely cape in the woods, but it wasn't set up for farming. Uh, so I was a little hesitant, but at the same time, I wasn't interested in driving a tractor or the expense of a tractor uh, mm -hmm. in, as well with this, this hillside. So we... Mm -hmm. uh, we decided to at least investigate it. Yep, yep. So we did some research and we asked the, the woman um, what we would need. And she came over and kind of looked at our land and said, okay, well, you could put shelter here. You could put fencing there. You are going to need water. Um, we priced it all out. And yeah, for about the cost of a new tractor, <laughs> we got our fencing and our barn and our new well dug. Um, and then that summer, so that was kind of a frantic time in the spring and early summer. And then later in that summer, we got our first flock. Um, yeah. yeah. So 2008, the summer of 2008, we completed the barn, the pasture, set up the water mm -hmm. and had the, the, well, first the delivery of the llamas. Right. The day before the sheep arrived. So the, the llamas were here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we took a delivery of our sheep and the rest is history, as they say. Yep. We're, um, we'll tell you a little bit more about our current flock in another episode coming up soon. Um, but what I really like about keeping sheep is that it's pretty easy. Um, I tell people it's easier than having an indoor pet like a dog or cat because you don't have to take them on walks. You don't have to scoop a litter box. Uh, you don't have to scold them for scratching up the furniture. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you're not breeding and worrying about you know all the stress of lambing, then basically it's just you know feed some hay or or turn them out on a new piece of pasture. Rick does a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to moving fencing in the summertime. Right, and you help with all the mm -hmm. heavy lifting that is cleaning the barn. <laughs> all the manure lifting, yeah. Um, which we don't do, um, you know, as frequently as we could. We sort of save it up uh, for special occasion and do, do a few cleanings a year. Um, but, you know, between the two of us and just having a small flock, it's pretty manageable. So, yeah, if you're um, interested in getting your own flock of sheep, I recommend going the way we did, which is finding a mentor, um, maybe reading about breeds of sheep you'd be interested in or what breeds people uh, keep near you. Environment plays a big role in kind of the ease of keeping certain breeds. Um, and then just find someone you can kind of shadow. Go to their farm, help them with chores, 
um, and also join your local association, sheep and goat association, sheep and wool board, or whatever you have in your area. Um, and they're, they're usually a really good resource for new shepherds. Um, our Vermont Sheep and Goat Association teaches a lot of classes for not very much money, and you can get started, and you can also kind of refresh your education or learn things that maybe your mentor wasn't as strong in, but, um, you know, things like parasite control or nutrition. Um, Just don't get bogged down in those things. It is something mm -hmm. that's controllable. It's something that if with a little bit of research you can learn about. Mm -hmm. um, and as Sarah said, find a breed that works for you, um, you know, very, whether it's the because of the type of the fiber or whether you're perhaps interested in raising meat or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Uh, but you want to make sure that there's a market for whatever it is, if that's what you're in. If you're doing something other than a spinning block. Right, right. If you're doing something more than you're just yourself, you also want to look at products and how people are marketing their products and what channels they have, whether they're selling to grocery stores or whether they're selling to local yarn shops or, or farmers markets. Or farmers markets or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. So yeah, look up sheep and uh, come visit us and you can visit our sheep too. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe to get all the episodes. Cheers.